there. Fancy meeting you here. How did you find out I was here? Mother told you. Well, I imagine if you get a few drinks in her, she'd tell you about anything you want to know. Of course, you know that. <laughs> That's right. Well, if you are, you're the first person she's told, and I'm proud of her. It's a real accomplishment for her to keep a secret this long. I mean, she never was one to be able to hang on to really juicy gossip, even if it was about her own daughter. <laughs> well, most people, as far as they're concerned, I'm on vacation in the Cayman Islands. And I've been there for two weeks now. Yes, I'm having a high old time. Instead, I've been rotting in here for two weeks. It's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm a grown woman. How they work this out, I'll never know. But Dr. Ashby went along with it. I suppose he thought there was a problem as well because he is overseeing my care here at Happy Hills. What a ridiculous name. Happy Hills. There's nothing happy about this place, and there's not a hill in sight. As flat as it can be out there. It's like a Scottish pancake. Well, darling, this is the only thing maintaining my sanity in here. I'm surprised they haven't taken it away from me yet. I said it was either this or a pack of cigarettes, and they would not let me have a cigarette. So I said, you're going to let me have this then. And Dr. Ashby actually liked the fact that I got a little stunned with the, with the nurses here. He said that was a sign of improvement and progress. But personally, I had just reached the end of my rope and I couldn't handle it anymore. And I just blew up at the ladies. It wasn't that I was, you know, going back to my old self. It was just that I had had enough. I couldn't take it anymore. But he took it as a sign of a step forward. And that is how I got this back. And you're going to have to apologize what I'm, you're going to have to overlook what I'm wearing. This is all they'll give me. I can't have jewelry. I can't have my hair done. These are all privileges that I have to earn back. You understand? But since I got sort of snippy and frosty with the nurses, Dr. Ashby let me have this that my mother brought. When she came to visit me, I believe it was two days ago, she brought me this. This is a cigar box. And it's on the top. It says St. Louis Ray S L I. Siri G. It's a solid wooden cigar box. And in here, I keep all my little hair pins and my hair clips. And Mother felt especially bad for me after that crazy inmate did what she did. Did she tell you about that? I'm sorry, we're supposed to call them guests. They're not inmates. I feel like we're all prisoners here. We're all trapped here. I don't exactly know why they expect us to call each other guests. We're not guests. We're trapped. And I'm trapped. And I'm not myself. I mean, I am I, dressed like a... I'm either dressed like a prisoner or a hospital patient. I'm not exactly sure what look they were going for here. They have me in this starchy scrub top and these starchy white scrub pants. I mean, it's, it's, it's criminal what they've done to me here. I can't wear jewelry. I have to earn back my jewelry. I have to earn back my shoes. Darling, I'm barefooted. I'm not even allowed to have socks or pantyhose or even flip-flops. I have to remain barefooted until I prove to Dr. Ashby that I have progressed to the point that I can have my shoes back. I can't even have a little pair of flip-flops. Nothing. Nothing. Look. I'm barefooted. I, I, this is definitely one of the lowest points of my life. I mean, I thought I had hit the lowest point when I had to go stay with Lynette. Exactly. But, you know, that actually, for me, was a turning point. Living with her it was worth everything I'm going through now. But don't tell Dr. Ashby I said that. No, because that, to him, is a step backward. That whole experience with Lynette and her family is the reason why I'm here. Well, you know, the judge made me go stay with her after I accidentally um, bumped her with my car. I had to go live with Lynette and her family to see what regular people live like. And I learned a lot from that experience. And I, I learned that 
I don't really understand how normal people live from day to day. And I enjoyed it. There were many things about living with Lynette and her husband and children that I really enjoyed. And I, I wanted to continue in some of the things that I had learned to experience and the things that I liked about being there. Well, this had Mom and Daddy very upset, and, and Rhett also. Of course, he's gone a lot. You know, he travels, you know, with the with the, uh, with the the lumber business. He's gone a lot. And uh, so he missed a lot of it in the beginning. But Clary, nosy little Clary, was talking to Mother and telling her about how I had changed and I was doing things that I had never done before. And she was concerned. Personally, I think she just wanted me out of her hair. She wanted me to go away for a while. Well, she got what she wanted. And I'm now stuck here at Happy Hills for God knows how long. Um, but I have to prove to Dr. Ashby that I am once again a dignified, a straight-laced, fine young lady. Refined with poise. And that I remember where I came from and how I am supposed to behave. I think it's all a bunch of malarkey, but I'll, t I'll give him whatever he wants, I suppose. But I don't want to be stuck here. I mean, we're, we're coming up on, on Fashion Week, and I'm not going to be there. Travesty. i got to get out of here. Uh, but yes, I did. I earned back a few items of mine, and, and my mother brought them. And Dr. Ashby said I could have them back because I got plain snippy with those nurses. I did. My temper flared. Oh, have mercy, my temper. I don't really care about showing my temper. But even now and then, something will get it stoked up. And those nurses, boy, they did it for me. And I let them have it. It was like the good old days, talking to the help, getting plain ornery with them. Well, sometimes you have to, because otherwise they don't do what you want them to do. They start thinking they don't have to listen. So you have to really lay down the law but I'm gonna show you what mama brought me excuse me mother I'm not allowed to use the word mama anymore uh, that is what Lynette that's how she would refer to her mother she called her mama and I heard so many conversations between Lynette and her mother that I just sort of picked up the word mama and I'm not allowed to use that word that is on my list of words that I'm not allowed to say anymore if I ever want to get out of here and yesterday we took a field trip we went to the Westphalia tea room and we had a lovely time but Dr. Ashby was watching me the entire time and he said that I was not forceful enough with the the wait staff there so I failed that test but I'm hoping that uh, we go tomorrow we go to the botanical gardens and I'm hoping that I will have a chance to prove to him there that I can be just as snooty as I'm supposed to be. We'll see how that goes. But here's my cigar box. It's very plain. There's nothing special about it. Uh, and it originally contained 25 cigars. And these are some that my daddy likes. It's funny. I can say daddy, but not mama. I'm supposed to say mother and daddy. That's what Dr. Ashby told me. But it opens right here on the top. There's a groove right there. And you sort of hook your finger into it and you pull the top back. And the top comes completely off. Just like that. Now the top is made of wood. And the entire box of course is made of wood. I'm not exactly sure what kind of wood it is. On the back, the underside is unfinished. It's mainly smooth. But the top is painted, of course, and much smoother. And then you have these grooves here where it fits into the top of the box, right there. And they run along this side as well. And I have had this box for quite a while. I keep this on my vanity, and I love it because it smells like daddy. Like, I can, I can open the box, and it smells like the cigars that he occasionally will smoke. And it reminds me of my daddy. So I keep all my my um, hair stuff in it. And uh, 
I was allowed to have this back, although I am not allowed to visit the hairdresser here. That is another privilege that I have to earn back, and I have not yet earned it back. I'm actually kind of embarrassed because I've been here for two weeks, and some of the other girls have earned it back quite a few privileges in the time that I've been here. And I'm falling behind because they say that I'm being stubborn and ornery. But the fact is, I, I cannot... I don't know that I'll ever be the same. Don't tell Dr. Ashby I said that. And don't tell my mother and father. And don't tell, don't tell Rhett. I don't believe I will ever be the same as I was before I stayed with Linnea and her family. Because I learned so much from them. And I learned that there are things that they do that I really enjoy. I enjoy relaxing. You know, not being so prim and proper all the time and worrying all the time about what other people think. I found that to be so liberating. I love Walmart. Definitely don't let Dr. Ashby know I said that. Love going in Walmart in the middle of the night. You know, they're open all night. They're open 24 hours a day. You can shop anytime you want to. Uh, Lynette does say that they're closed on Christmas Day. You can't shop then. But any other day, you can go shopping. And you can buy whatever you want to. And it's really cheap. Everything there is so cheap. I love going in there. I could shop. I could shop for hours and nobody's going to stop me. I can buy anything I want. And um, But I'm not allowed to go in there anymore. I'm not allowed to, to speak of Walmart. I am supposed to go back to Celia buying everything for me. Which is so depressing. I kind of like the freedom of going out and buying things for myself. But no, I'm supposed to go back to having Miss Celia buy and everything for me. Being my personal shopper, I have to learn how to order her around again. And I was only, I was only with Lynette for a short time. It was only supposed to be for a week, but I ended up staying more like two weeks. I believe it was almost two weeks. And that was voluntary. I loved it. You know, but Lynette and I became real good friends. And I miss her, but I'm not allowed to speak to her anymore. Uh, I'm not supposed to, but I actually have I, I sent her a couple of letters. I have worked it out with a couple of the nurses here. I bribe them with things, you know. Like, um, I would let them borrow my credit card and go out and do a little shopping if they would just drop a letter in the mail for me. I just wanted to let Lynette know that I'm fine and that everything's all right and that I'm going to be fine and, you know, we're good. I haven't heard back from her, but I did mention in my first letter that she couldn't write to me. I just wanted to let her know that everything is okay. But let me show you what I have in my box. I'm so excited because I did not have anything here. You know, I have I, I am not allowed to have any of my personal belongings at all nothing all I can have is what they what I absolutely have to have like a toothbrush toothpaste dental floss a hairbrush I'm allowed to have a hairbrush but no comb I don't exactly understand the logic there but they won't let me have a comb I can't have any hairspray I have on makeup right now uh, but that's because one of the other quote-unquote guests wanted to make me up and Dr. Ashby said that would be fine. I don't have any of my makeup. I have nothing here. Just what I absolutely have to have. In the shower, I am only allowed to use the soap and shampoo that they provide to me. I cannot bring any from home. I have to use what they have available here. And if I want to use something of my own, I have to earn it. But there are so few opportunities to actually earn anything here. I mean, Dr. Ashby has to witness it himself before he'll even consider letting you have something back in, in exchange for something you did. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm just going to have to get extra ugly with the staff here, I guess. I don't know. But I have some good stuff in here. Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Four thirty, absolutely. Yes, ma'am, that will be fine. Actually.
actually I, I have to learn not to be nice to people I have to learn to yell at these nurses more well I'm never going to get out of here oh she's gone now let me show you what I have here <laughs> see Dr. Ashby thinks he can tell me what to do and he can run my life but he can't you know what I have in here See, this looks like a regular drink, and I have wrapped a paper towel around it to absorb the moisture of the condensation on the cup. See, it's a plastic cup, and it has a lid that screws on the top. And a plastic straw. Looks perfectly normal, does it not? Well, I have in here, I have in here some bootleg beverage which I am not supposed to have, which is exactly why I have it. See, I bribed one of the nurses to bring this to me. Just like this. She brought me this cup, which is actually a standard issue cup. We all get cups like this. But I had her fix it up and put a little something special in here for me. All I had to do was give her a Prada bag. It was a wonderful exchange, if you ask me. Mm, it was worth it. So worth it. Okay, she's going to check on the, the girls down the hall. Let me show you this. Now, don't tell anybody. Because if you keep telling Dr. Ashby what I'm up to, I could end up stuck in here longer. Please don't do that to me. It looks like a perfectly normal drink. Perfectly normal. see that's not the nurse I made the deal with she'll wrap me out she doesn't like me I have an RC Cola yes ma'am mm. mm. I fell in love with these at Lynette's house she keeps these in her refrigerator it's absolutely wonderful so I told one of the nurses if she would bring me one of these in every day I'd give her a lovely bag, and I did just that. I am a woman of my word. I think I'm actually going to talk to her also about, um, maybe I'll give her something else if she'll allow me to yell at her and throw a few things at her while Dr. Ashby's here. It'd have to be done the day because she's only here during certain hours of the day. After that, he's on the golf course. I'll see you Nectar of the gods. Mm. Oh, it's wonderful. But I have to keep it concealed in my in my cup because this is definitely this is definitely some big time contraband right here. We are not allowed to drink anything any sort of a beverage of a fizzy nature we're not allowed to have. We can have tea, we can have water, we can have juice, but nothing else. No one's asked me about it yet. The nurses don't really pay any attention to what you're drinking as long as it's in your little green cup that everybody has. But I do have some of my products, and I am very happy to have at least a few things in mine back. And it looks like my mother stuck a couple little things in here for me. One thing she put in here was this. Brand new in the box. Oh, this is L'Oreal Paris Age Perfect Eye Renewal Eye Cream. You see, there it comes in this little container with a pump top on it. And it says here, I'm going to read the back to you. Why is Age Perfect Eye Renewal Eye Cream right for me? As we age, cell renewal can slow down, causing a decrease in overall vitality, even around the eye area. Inspired by 20 years of skin cell biology research, L'Oreal introduces Eye Renewal, a brilliant eye cream with five beautifying actions on signs of aging around the eyes. New surface cells are revealed every day around the eyes. Eyes appear rested, visibly smoother and brighter. The innovation. 
The powerful skin renewing formula helps reveal new cells on skin surface for a radiant, revitalized eye contour. With Procysteine, it helps defend against free radical damage and oxidative stress. And it has a whole bunch of ingredients, so you know it must be wonderful. And on the side, it shows you what the bottle looks like. Right there. And this is a 0.5 fluid ounce, 15 milliliter bottle. And that's just a wonderful. It was a nice little surprise. <clears throat> and then in here, we have this. This was also in my, my little cigar box. And uh, this is Rock Retinol Correction Sensitive Eye Cream. Anti-aging for retinol sensitive skin. Reduces the appearance of crow's feet and under eye wrinkles. And this is another new box. And it says on the back, retinol, recommended by dermatologists as one of the most effective anti-aging ingredients, is not an option for some as it irritates and reddens their skin. The anti-aging experts at Rock have found a solution. Rock Retinol Correction Sensitive Eye Cream. Designed to help fight lines and wrinkles around the delicate eye area with minimal or no irritation while helping condition skin to retinoids. This gentler, lightweight formula contains a unique blend of the most powerful anti-aging ingredients known to fight wrinkles. So it was a nice little bonus for me, especially since I'm not allowed to have any makeup at all. Now I'm starting to feel really deprived. It's making me irritable, which is good because I get snappy with the nurses when I get irritable. And that may help get me out of here. I'll have to wait and see. <laughs> but since uh, one of the guests went wild the other night and cut all my hair off, oh yes, that's where all my hair went. I have some things in here that no longer apply to me, like I have these hair clips. And I used to use these when my hair was longer. Like if I was going to take a bubble bath or something like that, I would have Clary take one of these here. And uh, she would gather up my hair and put it up kind of off of my neck so that I could get in the tub and not get my hair wet. But I don't imagine that I will be needing these anymore for a while anyway. And then I have this clip here. Now this is a goody, goody hair clip. G-O-D-D-Y, G-O-O-D-Y. Not gaudy, goody. And uh, it just fits like that. And I used to use this again when my hair was longer. And I don't know that I have much of a use for it anymore. This is a black one here. But I don't know that I can use that. And then I have this smaller, just adorable little clip. Very tiny. And it is also black and it has a padded top on it. Oh, these are one of my favorites, but you know what? I don't know that I can use these anymore either. <clears throat> these are beaded elastic. And the beads, the uh, strands are sort of woven together and they zigzag back and forth across these two clips here. And the clips are made in such a way, see how they're rounded like that? They are rounded so that you can, um, what you do, and it's not gonna look good because I can't see what I'm doing and I don't have Clary here to help me. But you take this and you start on one side and you sort of stick it into your hair and then you stick in the other side as well. Well, you know, it would be nice and I actually did. Um, I threw some pudding at one of the nurses one morning. I asked for grits and she brought me tapioca and I was so angry. I was hungry and I was mad and I threw it at her and that got me one of my hats back. Dr. Ashby saw the whole thing and he let me have my hat. Although what I'm going to do with it, I don't know. It doesn't exactly go too well with scrubs, now does it? No, it does not. 
but I reckon if we walk around outside in the yard, I could put it on then and keep the sun out of my eyes, if nothing else. If this is the only hat I currently have here. My mother didn't bring me any hats. She at least brought me these hair supplies. This is a Nine West hat. It's a woven hat, and it has a string on it. It was made by Nine and Company, which is Nine West. And, um, I bet at least I earned this hat back. Maybe if I fling a few dishes at dinner, I can get some makeup or shampoo that doesn't make my hair feel like straw. That would be lovely. Those nurses love being mean to us. Well, I wasn't expecting there to be this many other girls here either. And apparently they've had a, a, a recent surge in uh, patients. I keep wanting to say inmates because we feel like we're all in prison. They've had a recent uptick in patients lately. Guests, whatever you want to call us. Um... I'm not really familiar with it, but from what one of the nurses told me, there's this new uh, app that you can put on your phone, and you walk around, you turn on this little game, and you walk around and you catch monsters. I don't understand the point of it, but apparently a lot of the, the uh, society ladies have become addicted to this game, and they're walking around catching monsters on their phones. It's the dumbest thing I ever heard, but they're addicted to it. And while they're out walking around, they are becoming exposed to other people and other places and falling in with some some crowds that their parents don't approve of. And then they end up here when their parents have had enough or their spouse has had enough or, and they start to act out. They get their phones taken away and they get put in here until they can behave themselves. Well, at least my experience was real. I mean, at least I wasn't out there chasing fake animals. I don't even know what that's about. I should write a letter to Lynette and ask her if she knows anything about it. I bet she does. You know, I thought I was worldly. I thought I knew everything until I met her. Lynette's a survivor. I am impressed with her. She is so resourceful. I mean, she, she really has everything figured out. It's so warm in here. That's another thing they do to punish us. Occasionally they just turn the air off and it gets like a sauna in here. It's disgusting what they do to us. It's, uh, it's, it's cruel. They don't do it on visiting day, I notice. Whenever we have visitors come in, they don't do it. They keep the temperature nice and comfortable. They torture us the rest of the time. I mean, ugh. Do you know who caters our dinners and lunches here? No, no. It's the Thomasons. The Thomasons cater our, fee our meals here. I know. I think they were cleared on the charges, but how they're still in business, I have no idea. It's awful the way we have to eat here. We've only had filet mignon one time since I came here. One time. Veal parmesan? If I have to eat that again, I'm going to die. We have it every day. I'm tired of it. But I have more in here. I have, this is just a, a, a regular elastic to put your hair in, and I don't think I'll be needing that anymore for a while, but it's sort of a tan color. I like it because it's, it's a light beige color, and it matched my hair pretty well. And then I have this giant clip here, and this part of it is coated in this plastic coating that helps hold it in your hair so it doesn't slide out as bad. It holds it a little better doesn't just slide right out. And then I had another one of these. 
which is just like the other one, except it has different colors to it. Sort of, uh, I don't know what you call that, perhaps a, a light brown. But it's the same basic concept. And I used to use this when Clary would do my hair up in a French, uh, she would do a French roll and then apply one of those elastics to it. It looks so pretty. It was good to have her do my hair in between in, in between trips to the salon. Sometimes she could do really neat things with it. And I miss Clary. You know, if Mother isn't around and you come by my house, would you please tell her I said that? Actually, no, don't tell her I said that. See, I'm, I'm so confused. I, I, I'm very confused here. I mean, I've, I've learned so much about the world from being with Lynette. And I've learned to have compassion and sympathy for people and how to be nice and use manners and have respect for other people. But I'm being punished for it here. I'm absolutely being punished. I don't want anything to eat. What are we having for dinner? Again, I'm not eating that. No, I'm not. Well, you can tell Dr. Ashby that I refuse to eat. And you can tell him why. I'm not eating veal parmesan again. I'm not going to eat until we get some decent food in here. I refuse. You tell him I said that. Maybe that'll get me my makeup back. I'm very confused. I am a, I am a cultured lady of society. But it's almost like... It's almost like, you know, do you remember when we were kids? I don't know if you saw it or not. Did you ever see a video of the Scared Straight program? Where they take these, these tough girls and boys and they take them into these prisons and these inmates will just basically get in their face and yell at them and tell them, you know, how it really is to live that kind of a life. Well, going to stay with Lynette was kind of like the Scared Straight program. I was like a deer in the headlights for the first few days. But after a while, I really got into it and it opened my eyes to so many things to where I don't know if I could ever go back to being the person I was before. And I don't know how I feel about that. Naturally, everybody in my family is upset. I'm very concerned about me and I appreciate their concern, but at the same time, I know that I'm a better person now. And I don't know if I can go back to the way things used to be. So what do I do? Do I remain in this life? Do I run away? What do I do? What would you do? Well, I hardly think a wax would do anything to help solve my problem and my dilemma here. A wax? Really? Shopping. Go shopping. Your answer is a wax and shopping. Oh my word, I used to think just like you. Oh, no offense, honey. No, uh, of course not. No offense, darling. It's just that you think like I used to think. And now I don't know what to do. Oh, honey, don't worry about dinner. Don't worry about that. I got it covered. I'm fine. See, one good thing about having this hat here. See, I, here on my day bed, this is where I am as expected to spend most of my day. I am confined to this bed for now. I am allowed some exercise. We play badminton outside occasionally. But for most of the day, I am expected to lounge here on the day bed. I keep my hat here on the bed. And one of the reasons I keep it here is because I have something hidden under my hat. I have a moon pie. One of the other nurses brought me this. Yeah. I let her buy my credit card and go to Target. And she brought me a moon pie. Have you never heard of this? Oh, honey. See, I need, you know what I need to do? I need to arrange for you to go stay with Lynette for a week. You would learn so much. Of course, then you would be in here with me, but 
you know, because your family would never approve of it. But I tell you, it's, I learned so much. Lynette introduced me to moon pies. These things are fabulous. It's a marshmallow sandwich. And it's covered in chocolate. It has marshmallows inside. And, and the, um, the cookie pot is almost like a graham cracker. Fantastic. It's like a s'more. It's kind of like a s'more. Wonderful, wonderful item. I don't need dinner. Because if nothing else, I can eat this. And feel so rebellious while I do it. But I have to keep it hidden under my hat. Because if I get caught with that, it'll be back to square one for me. put my hair items away. I imagine she'll come back again and ask me if I want dinner. And I think that's when I'll throw something at her. I'll throw my fan at her. This won't hurt her, but it'll make my point. And that will definitely get uh, some notes put in my chart and Dr. Ashby will have something to review if I throw this at her. It's a strange world I live in now, I tell you. Very strange. I mean, I'm back in my normal life. I'm back in my normal environment. Well, I'm not here. I mean, at Happy Hills is not my environment. Back, but, but I mean back home. But it's not my home anymore. It's not where I'm completely comfortable anymore because of my experiences out there in the world. And no one in my family can understand that. <sighs> I'm not sure what to do. I'm just going to take it one day, one, one day at a time. One step at a time, I, I reckon. I don't really know any other way to handle it. But I'm so glad you stopped by. And you make sure you keep my, my secret, keep mother's secret, my secret. As far as, as far as we're concerned, you didn't see me. I was not here. You were not here. It was wonderful to see you, though. Thank you for coming to see me. And hopefully I will be able to cause enough of a ruckus soon to get out of here and get back home. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to walk you out, but <clears throat> come see me again sometime.